Hey guys, it's Chris here with the Britney Spears book tag. I'm going to put a link to all the creators of this tag down below. This is a tag that I've wanted to do for a very long time. Like so many other tags that I have written down in a notebook, I'm slowly going to start going through them. Some of them I've been tagged to do, some I haven't. This one I don't think I was, but I could have been. I was like, I put a question mark by it, because I think someone told me to do it, but they didn't necessarily tag me in their video. So yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to put all the people who made the tag down below. Um, and we're going to to do questions, which I thought was really fun, because they're kind of about Britney's life. And so, yeah, let's do this. The first question is, Mickey Mouse Club. Um, and so it's like your favorite a childhood book or something. Actually, let me pull up the freaking questions before I mess this up. <laughs> Alright, Mickey Mouse Club, a book you read as a child that sparked your love for reading. And for that, my answer is the Circle of Magic books. I think that books, that book series is definitely the thing that kind of sparked my love of reading. And it's a fantasy series, which I don't read a lot of fantasy anymore, but, like, I don't know. It was just reading um, Street Magic and learning about the character Briar that really, like, was like, I need to read this entire series. Um, so definitely going to go with that one. Second one is, oops, I read it again, a book you love to reread. There's only one book that I reread constantly, and it is The Realm of Possibility, which I'm not even sure if you guys can see right now because of the glare, but, like, The Realm of Possibility by David Levinson. I read it in high school. Um, it's just a bunch of different perspectives from all these different characters, and it's really lyrical and pretty, and I really liked it. I read it for a competition, and it was just like, yes. I got lots of points because of knowing the characters and everything about that book and that competition. Like, I, w I had it down. I was like, yes, about other books. Ask me anything about Realm of Possibility, I got you. Because I reread it so many times then, and I've reread it so many more times since then. So, yeah, that's my favorite reread. Jamie Lynn, as in Jamie Lynn Spears, a book that looks really similar to another book. So I've been struggling with this one. I'm sure some people would probably have, like, some automatic answers for that, but I kind of struggled with it. My first thought was something that didn't actually work, but then I thought of this book, The Evolution of Ethan Poe, and how it reminded me of a book um, by a different author, and then I, found, I finally found the book. It is... She looks just like me. Crossroads, a severely underrated comic. I love the Crossroads movie. Oh my god, that movie was so good. Anyway, um, my severely underrated thing, I'm going to say the Backstagers comics, which not a lot of people know about the Backstagers comics, but they are so freaking good. It's like about the kind of theater tech guys, the people who do the props and all that, and they find um, in the prop room there is like a door to this magical land, essentially. Um, it's like Narnia, but like theater. And like... It's cool, and most of the characters are gay. I think, I feel like all the characters are gay except for, like, one. I think, seriously. And there's a trans character um, in the main cast. Uh, the main character is black, is a black gay guy. Um, and I just, oh my god, it just makes me so happy. It's so queer, it's so fun, and I just really, really enjoy these comics a lot. Justin Timberlake, I think is the next question. A book you just can't get over, and I'm gonna go with... Last thing leaving by Caleb Rorick. It's only been since October since I read it, but like I can't get over how much I liked this book. When I read the book, I raved about it, and I, I still, when I saw this question, I was like, you know, that's the one from the most recent reads, like from like the last several months of reads, it's still this book for me. Um, that I just can't get over it, and how good it was, and the story of Flatta, and the mystery, and how I still have so many questions. Madonna, an older character you secretly want to make out with. So this is really hard, because first of all, I was like, an older character? Which characters are older than me? I'm not that old, obviously, but like, still, I was like, I'm 25 going on 26 right now, and I read a lot of YA, so that's not really helping. So then I started to think of comics, and my answer for it is Midnighter. I love Midnighter, and I'm pretty sure Midnighter is older than me. He's like one of the more older heroes, and I don't know, I, I would totally bang Midnighter, let's be real. I mean, I wouldn't, if he was like, I wouldn't, ch like, take him from Apollo, because I don't want to die, but, like, I would totally bang Midnighter if he was, like, single, like he is in the first volume of Midnighter, <laughs> uh, and the more recent Midnighter comments, so, I don't know, yeah, yeah, I would, I, I would, Midnighter, for sure, for sure, for sure. The Honest Hotel is a, a book you quit halfway through, and I have quit many books halfway through, um, my, uh, I don't know what my most recent halfway through quit was. But I know a halfway through quit that I had was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. 
just wasn't for me. And a lot of people love that book. It wasn't really for me at all. Um, I've said to tell people that I might try it again because a lot of my friends like it, but like it wasn't my thing. So that's one of the books for sure. <laughs> this question is so bogus. Federline, a book you regret bringing into your life. Um, and honestly, ugh, the only things I can think are things that like books that have triggered me in different ways. And so like. Now, Forgive Me, Leonard Peacock would be one. Oh my god, this book that I literally wiped the name from my brain. But it dealt with eating disorders in a very not tactful way. So that, there's a book that I read a while back. Uh, I don't even remember the name of it anymore. Because I just can't with it. And it just didn't do, deal with it in a way that was helpful, I thought. If I was a bit dealt with it in a way that was harmful. So that's definitely a book that came to mind. And yeah, I don't know. Those, those are kind of the only regretful reasons. The only books I would like completely regret bringing into my life would be something that had that a very negative effect on my life. So those are things that are popping into my head right now. Your foot in the bathroom. A dirty book. So I'm assuming that means like, I, I, mean, I guess it could be whatever you want to mean. For me, since I read romance and erotica, I'm going to go with one of those. And my brain is saying, you've read a lot of kinky erotica, Chris, and I really have, but like, stripped like pole one with a pole dancing thing that was rock, going on throughout most of it but like my most recent one that I can think of that like was good is like wrapped together by Annabeth Albert which is really like a really good romance but they um the two the couple's also exploring kink a little bit in their sexual in the sexual parts of the book they're exploring kink a little bit together and I really like the way that she handled that so yeah it's a dirty book but it's also a really really sweet book so we're gonna go with that Cheeto a book with an orange cover Asian Demons, Dan Brown. 2007, a book that was hard to get through. When the Moon's Ours. Um, I don't know why it was hard for me to get through, but this book took me a really long time to read, you guys. Like, I liked it, but it took me forever to get through. Give me more. A book that should have had a sequel or sequels? Here are they pay more. I think I always answer this for this question. I'm going to probably answer it differently if I ever get this question again, because I answer it all the time. But this book was supposed to have sequels, but the author died, and it's just really sad to me. Like, it just makes me sad that we didn't get more on this character, who is just awesome and queer, and I just really, really love this book. And I felt like there was so much more in store for it in the future, you know? It's just, I don't know, it's, a, it's unfortunate. Starbucks. I love Starbucks. Um, a book that kept you up all night. We're just gonna go with a book that's nearby, because it happens to be in the stack over here. Seven vs. the Home is Safe is a dead night. A lot of books that kept me up all night, but this is a book that kept me all up all night when it really wasn't a good time for it. It was a day before a concert, so I knew I was going to be up late the next day, but I still stayed up until 5 in the morning reading this book because it was just so good and I kind of put it down. So, yeah, life. Three, a book that features a love triangle. Instead of featuring a love triangle, I'm going to feature a polyamorous relationship and say Misfits by Garrett Lee. I really love this book. I really love the development of the relations between the three characters because it definitely starts off as um, it's a couple who has an open relationship. The other one of the people in the couple starts kind of dating this other guy and it slowly builds towards the three of them having this really strong, beautiful connection and I absolutely love um, the way that Garrett Lee handled this story. So... Misfits by Garrett Way. Cool. A book you thought was really cool. We're going to go with The Sun is Also a Star, which is really funny because, like, if you think of cool, like, temperature, this is the opposite. But I just really like that Nicola Yoon does, yes, it's Nicola Yoon book, um, does some really interesting things in this book with the connections between people that people meet throughout the day. Um, it's, she has a two main characters throughout it, but then she also dives into these heads of other people they just meet throughout their day that you don't really think about very much. And I thought that that was super, super cool. So we're going to go with this book. And now, and for the last question, we got Work Bitch, which is an inspirational read. Uh, and you know what I'm going to pick for that? Something I don't own, but I really, really wish I did. It is Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan. I feel like Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan uh, just did such a really beautiful thing. The entire concept of it was really interesting. It's told from the perspective of 
people who have passed, the gays who have passed on in the past, watching down on these uh, modern generation of queer kids, and is following the these two kids in particular who are trying to beat the world record for kissing. And I just felt like there were so many inspirational moments throughout this text. I listened to it in audiobook form, and I read a little bit on ebook as well. But it was just so, so, so good. It's still with me right now. Like, it's a book that definitely stays with you. And I felt like... I don't know. It's just, it's the obvious answer for this one for right now is just Two Boys Kids and Love It Then, which I really recommend everyone give a shot to because I think it's just a really, really good book. Uh, I do think it's, I think it's works better on audiobook, but I still want to have a physical copy, to be honest. Uh, just because, like, I don't know, it's such an interesting narrative voice. Um, so, yeah. I really like that book. I'm going to stop raving about it now. So, yeah. Alright, this is the part where I tag people, and I'm tagging my friend Nick of the Book Lock, because I already asked him if it would be like, okay to tag him with this. And I did it in a very roundabout way. I was like, do you like Britney Spears? <laughs> How do you feel about Britney Spears? That's the way I asked. So yeah, tagging Nick, and I'm also going to go ahead and tag Tanner's Books and Beyond, even though you may have done this tag, and you may not like Britney Spears, I'm going to tag you anyway, because friends, why not? Um, and I would tag my other friends like Cheyenne Prescott and Nick Leck. Megan and maybe Rachel Hobson, but you guys might not like Britney Spears, but I'm tagging y'all anyway. You don't have to do this. I haven't done most of the things that you all have tagged me to do. Let's be real. I am so behind, and I'm completely my but that's life. All right, so, yeah, that's going to be it for this video, and I will see everyone next time. I hope you guys have a wonderful morning, evening, or night, or whatever time it is as you're watching this, and I'm about to go play some Pokemon Go. See ya!